gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We only come before you asking for your wisdom this evening. Help us to have a good meeting. Help us to be civil to each other and to show mercy and grace to those who need it. And show your love to everyone. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you for your diligence to get off a little slow start here tonight. The package we have in minutes from the 821 meeting. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to second. Any protections or comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Mr. Curious. Chairman, reports. Committee reports, Chairman. Our busiest month for tourism event this coming weekend we will have two. The Kennett RC Club 3D Bash will be Thursday through Sunday out near the Humane Department. This brings in visitors from all over the country. This year alone, I know they've got visitors from at least four brand new states that have not been here before, so that's great news for us. And that is a free to the public event, so I encourage anybody to go out. There's no set time. Uh, in the evening they do some really neat things with lights so I encourage the public to just go out and visit that event especially on Saturday and Sunday. Um, and then the next will be the Castle Fallen Arts Festival Saturday and Sunday. They've got a fun lineup of food, music, and entertainment for a full uh, idea of the lineup. You can visit CAFTA.org or their Facebook page and I encourage everyone to go down and visit that this weekend. And then three weeks from today we will kick off the Delta Fair which is our biggest event all year long um, and everyone's very familiar with that event. Parade will start Tuesday night. You can register up until the 21st at the Chamber Office and then um, that following weekend after the 21st I think entries will be taken and at the fair so you can find all details regarding the fair at deltafairfund.com. Everyone should refer to that. Um, so we just want everyone to visit all of those events and really uh, make it a point to stay home and visit Kenneth this week, this month. Um, finally, our office has received tourism reimbursement requests from the agencies which we have already approved here. Um, so I'm working on sifting through those this week and getting those returned to the club as soon as possible. Does anybody have anything? Nope. All Thank, right. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Uh, just a couple of things. We don't have our numbers for August, so we'll have those in a couple of weeks. Uh, we did have a meeting this afternoon, and we approved some spending out of the capital improvement funds. So we have one more department to work with, and uh, we're moving forward. Still quite a bit of work to do on that. Yep. Uh, as usual, this is the part of the heads. If you've got a large item that you're putting through to expend, please double check with the city clerk's office. Make sure the money's in the bank. It should be, but uh, just make sure we don't flood up on something. We'll double check. All right. Human resource. Next time. Thank you. We will have a third session at the regular meeting tonight. Uh, I just got word a little bit ago that uh, Mr. Woodwright's mother in law was being transferred to Memphis. That's my fish use. So we'll have a couple of prayers going with him. I'm fond of his mother in law. I worked with him a number of years when I was in the printing business. And they were doing the auctions for many ladies, and Rhonda was always willing to bring all the work in, so appreciate her. Street Department? We're trying to uh, finalize the work on 3rd Street. Uh, that's going to be our first project with the uh, wastewater, uh, the stormwater, excuse me, stormwater money once that uh, continues to. Uh, Grow and we've uh, worked on a new plan for South Jackson water management as well. We also have uh, the grant for uh, the uh, 
um, that we use for the hiking and biking trail uh, is in application for that is, is uh, available and um, we're, we'd like people from the community to give us ideas or anybody on the council to give us an idea as well. Uh, it's uh, the major points are construction of on or off road for pedestrians or bicycles uh, for transportation purposes, not for recreational use, and it's a direct connection between important community destinations. They can anybody that's interested in uh, giving us an idea can bring it to the council, or they can contact me directly, and we'll put that in consideration. Uh, it's the 80/20 grant that we've used in the past, uh, so we're looking for ideas and to get this uh, grant developed again. We can't <coughs> use transportation money for the other 20 percent. So please let us know if you have any good ideas on this. That's it. Thank you. Um, a lot of work to be done on that. A lot of uh, discussion amongst the community, particularly. I think Randy will go through some of that later. Is that right? But uh, anyway, the, the big thing is it's going to be the educational end of it. And a lot of that's got to happen. A lot of that. We have a whole lot tonight. Uh, we will be this weekend conducting an emergency vehicle driving class uh, sponsored by the University of Missouri Fire Rescue Training. Uh, it'll meet, help us meet Murmur's requirement of a practical driving portion of the class. So we'll be getting that done. We've uh, made temp uh, preliminary contact with our <coughs> with the food pantry box down at number three station, and uh, we'll be working on that. But before we we fire department participated in uh, two food giveaways that was sponsored by the Semo Food Bank. And, they thought they only had two, they called back and said they have a third one. We haven't set the date yet, but feeds about 250 people in the community each time. So we're doing another one of those. Pound has done a lot of work on it, a lot of volunteer work. Appreciate all those that either gave money at more time, and they pretty well met the uh, Department of Agricultural uh, Requirements. So more to come on that. Uh, code Enforcement Officer Victor Moe did get uh, the book, the code books donated to the library. So if someone needs to look up a code or something, they can go to the library. I don't know if it's on a checkout system, but it's there for reference. Or they can go look at the current model code that the city has in our library, which can make it a lot easier than they get a hold of Victor to look at the book or whatever. <clears throat> yeah. So those are a couple of things that's going on. Uh, attended the uh, emergency management conference uh, a week ago, a good conference. Our coordinator for this region took a job with Cape County, so we should know in a couple of weeks who our new coordinator <clears throat> is. We were approved once again this year for a 50-50 match grant for the operations of emergency management and certain things we have to do. It's about uh, it's about a $9,500 give or take little split there. I think maybe close to $10,000, but that's uh, With that system, we noticed way back even in 09 that the city did not own an ID card maker during that time period. It was quite difficult because we had our temporary people go out and inspect electrical and stuff. People want to know who they are because there's so many fly of nights. So what I was able to do in this grant period, they come up with the state purchased a system through this company that allows us to put inventory in it. But with this inventory system, I was able to put in that grant for the card printer, and it has a label maker that makes the Teflon labels that are pretty tough for putting the tags on equipment, and the scanner that's a hand barcode reader. So, in our reserve money that we get back on some of that uh, emergency management, 
it's about $3,800, so it's a 50-50 split. Part of it's in our grant. The other part we're going to take out of reserve that all the departments within the city will be able to make ID cards for even city council people as well. So if something happens like that again, you can print quick badges for volunteers that are working in neighborhoods or whatever, but also we can give all of our employees in the department ID cards if they're ever questioned going in the neighborhoods, whether it's as a fire police, off duty or whatever, or even street department people working. People nowadays are more conscious and look around and question it more. So that was one thing we were able to get and uh, get the cost split for us. So that's a good deal. Anyway, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Busy week as usual. Kenneth down last week. Uh, yeah, real good. They stayed real busy. Make several arrests. Uh, a lot of thank yous going out this week. First, the American rail car industry. They uh, knew that we were building a range and they uh, got word that we were needing some steel targets out there. So they got together amongst themselves and uh, made us several high quality targets. And uh, I can thank Mike Lack and Butch Cooper and the group. Uh, you know, made very well. And, I just couldn't be prouder. You know, ARS committed to this community, and uh, they show it all the time. And it's the good citizens of Kennett and the surrounding area that always comes to aid when people are, are needed. Uh, and I really appreciate that. Uh, last week, weekend before last, we had a pursuit. Pursuits are dangerous. We don't like to get into them. Sometimes it's just the nature of the beast. It started out in the county. The county got after a vehicle. Uh, Pursuit ended out in Clay County. <coughs> Captain Stewart, I know he's here tonight. He was part of that. Uh, Officer Aaron Mays also. Uh, and after the pursuit ended, the vehicle, he tried to get, jump out of the car and pursue him that. He wrecked and hit a tree and got lodged in between a tree and the vehicle. Mm. So at that time, <coughs> also the dry scrubber and stuff, and, you know, caught everything on fire. The vehicle started catching on fire. Uh, at that time, we went to a life-saving mode. Captain Stewart and Officer Mays, they did an outstanding job. They pulled the vehicle, uh, the people from the vehicle. Also in the process, they saved a, a, a dog and a pup also. So those are things we do. We get into one thing that over a period it leads into something else. You know, we're pursuing part and all of a sudden we're life-saving at the same time. Also thank the uh, Pigot Police Department, they come to assist the Florida Department from Pigot and also the County Sheriff's Department of uh, You just never know what we're going to get into. And, uh, it's our job to save people's life also. I'm very proud of our guys. We show their heroics that night and they risk their own life. Also, we've got the Delta Fair coming up. Uh, that's a big event. Stretch this year, but we will get it covered. Also, the fairgrounds will be covered. Uh, does anybody got any questions for me? I would like to say thank you to the officers that responded to my house over on Walnut Street for the day. They sort of break in over there, they did hitch the bad guy inside the house <coughs> and uh, made a good arrest. So I do thank them for the charges will be filed on that. <coughs> but we're yeah. still working on but I do appreciate the Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> That's your reports. I uh, don't have a whole lot more to add to those uh, written reports. Uh, where he's still in the middle of construction season, staying pretty busy. Uh, we've lost two employees since the middle of July, so we're down. Uh, not now, right now, not planning on replacing them at this point in time for budgetary purposes and training purposes and they're taking time to work with them and stuff. So, uh, Mr. Palmer mentioned stormwater. 
uh, we had a fairly lengthy meeting the other night uh, discussing uh, the program, the federal program that we have to go through and all the requirements on it, as well as uh, many projects. I didn't count them, we've got them written down, but I think there's five or six major projects that we're looking at that we need to be funded out of the stormwater over the next few years, but hopefully we can get them all done in the 10 year period if other things still don't come up. But uh, hope to uh, get the bills out this week for the Third Street project. Uh, so we'll try to move forward with that. We can make some changes in it and hope we can get the cost down some. Uh, just have to see how it works. Uh, Mr. Palmer mentioned the uh, transportation grant from MoDOT. We'll be working with that. The deadline on that to have it in is uh, 1st of November, but uh, that's about a 45 or 50 day process uh, to get that all put together and then like that. It's, it's quite a lengthy project to be successful with that. The last thing I'd like to mention real quick, uh, you may or may not have seen it, you'll be hearing more about it, is the gas, the fuel tax increase uh, here in the state of Missouri to be on the November ballot. Uh, it'll be a 10 cent increase, two and a half cents per year leading up to that 10 cent uh, increase. Uh, a lot of that will go to law enforcement, to the highway patrol. A lot of it will come back to local uh, entities like us. Uh, they're projecting uh, when the 10 cents is fully implemented in the neighborhood of $171,000 additional gas tax money coming back to the city of Kennedy. Uh, over $400,000, with that $171,000 included, will be over $440,000 coming back to Duncan County. Uh, the people that have put this together and are promoting it uh, realize the shape of our, not only our infrastructure within the city, but in the county and in the state. Uh, if you've driven any of the A's, B's, uh, multi numbered or lettered roads out in the county, you'll realize how bad they are. Uh, and uh, I hope that they, I, I don't like paying taxes anymore than anybody else in the room, but uh, we've got to fund what we use. And uh, everybody says that that's kind of a fair tax, and the people that drive the most uh, are on the roads the most are paying the most. The people that don't aren't paying very much. So it's kind of in some ways like a sales tax. So, you know, in that aspect of it. But we'll, we'll get some more information to you all so you can read about it. I'm sure you'll be hearing more about it in the news media too. Thank you. Any package you have a request to appoint Tony Haggard to the park board? Also, the next thing you have is a list of special tax. Uh, this is a request for the council to forego a tax lien that has been accumulated on this property due to the city board of maintaining it. James Ruddick, our council member, is uh, going to acquire the property that's next to his house. Uh, this has been run by council and is, as you said, the city, you have the authority to release the lien on the property if you choose to do so. How much is the money? How much is the money? How much? $850. This, this has been accrued over some time. More <coughs> years. Is that correct? Do you have a motion? I'll make a motion. 
Okay. 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 Thank you. 